of season six of Outlander. I've seen the first couple of episodes. You won't be disappointed. Uh, season five closed with Jamie rescuing Claire after a brutal kidnap, attack and sexual assault. And when I spoke to Katrina Balf, she explained that the impact was still being felt for both characters. Season six, we pick up a few months after the end of season five. Um, as a family, you know, they're, they're still slightly reeling from the events at the end of season five, but everyone's kind of trying to put a brave face on it and move forward. Claire personally, I think, is um, internally struggling a lot, but she's trying not to show anybody that. And also, you know, we have this revolutionary war that's looming and Jamie is very much struggling to figure out where to pledge his allegiance and he knows that the English or the British are going to lose but it's about how to play his hand and make sure that when it's necessary he's on the winning side. You mentioned the end of season five it was quite traumatic uh, Claire was in a, a bit of a bad place and this obviously carries on dealing with the trauma of that as well and she kind of I think begins to dip into her medical expertise a bit. Yeah, you know, one of the things, even last season when we were approaching um, that horrific attack and, and rape, one of the things that I felt was really important and the writers as well was that we were going to give a lot of time to her recovery and explore that. And so that's something that I'm really grateful that we, we see a lot of this season. You know, she's somebody who up to this point has always been able to compartmentalize and move past, a, you know, traumatic events, I think, quite quickly. And we see this, this season that she's not able to do that. So, you know, she's suffering from a lot of PTSD um, and she may start leaning on, on things that really aren't helping her, um, sort of crutches or self-medicating maybe in a, in a slight way. We mentioned that the, her medical skills. How were your medical skills back at the start of season one <laughs> to where we are now? Because I'm very impressed with your stitching ability and, and how you were uh, able to deal with a, a, a childbirth, for example. Yeah, well, you know, I don't think I'll be uh, <laughs> cutting into anybody myself anytime soon. <laughs> but uh, I think all of the all of the cast sort of get this uh, little bit of fear when I have to do some uh, sewing on their prosthetics because usually these prosthetics pieces just sit on top of the real skin. So when I have been known to maybe go a little too deep when I've been sticking a needle in. You know, it's one of the great things about the show. We have our real Dr. Claire, uh, who's a fabulous uh, Scottish doctor, who's our medical advisor. And it's just been fascinating working alongside with her for now, set, you know, six seasons, just getting her advice and, and how doctors would, you know, use their hands or what would be the things that they would automatically go for. and. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. I could not do that job in real life, though. <laughs> you look very convincing when you do on screen. Thank you. Um, I also want to ask you, I noticed when the credits were rolling that, that you and Sam are now producing as well as obviously starring in Outlander. And, and I was thinking, you know, the scale of Outlander as, as a project, as a commitment, as an actor, first and foremost, must be, must be huge. But is this adding another layer of, of, t of, of time and, and commitment for you uh, working on the show? A little bit. Um, yeah, there's there's some extra time uh, commitments that are needed. And, you know, we were brought in a little bit earlier on the scripts and sort of breaking the story. And there's a little bit of extra time with giving notes and things like that. But, you know, I think it's something that Sam and I really welcomed. I think when you've been on a show for as long as we have, you want to expand your horizons and you want to continually be learning and be challenging yourself. And this was um, something that we both, yeah, we're, we're really excited about joining the ranks of our great producers. It, it looks fantastic. I mean, Outlander here in, in season six, it always has had this fantastic epic, you know, sort of look, even though it is, you know, made for, for television. And we've discussed this on the, on the program before. It, I think we're getting to a stage now where, where cinema and television have probably never been closer would you say that? Yeah. I mean, you know, because some of the, the, the episodes are nearly feature length on their own. Yeah, I mean, very much so. You know, I, I think the budgets of TV episodes, you know, they can be anything from five to 10 million, you know, depending on what show you are. And that's the budget of, you know, quite a lot of pretty sizable indie films these days. And I think if somebody asked me, you know, what's the difference day to day being on a TV show or doing a film? And really, it, there's no difference day to day. You know, I think the actual doing and making of 
is quite the same. And if anything, the difference between the two is that films, to my experience, are so much easier <laughs> because the time, the time commitment, and you sort of have this 120 page script or 130 page script and, and then you're done. Whereas we're doing, um, 120 pages every five weeks and you sort of roll straight from one into the next. Um, but it's amazing to see, you know, the amount of talent that's behind the scenes, whether it's the writers or the the creators and, and, you know, we have the most amazing crew in Scotland and you really see that kind of expertise and that brilliant talent you see it on screen. Was it all filmed in Scotland this season? It was. We filmed from January to July. Uh, most of it was sort of the height of the COVID lockdown um and the height of winter um so it was a pretty challenging scene or season this year to film what impact did that have because i was i was watching and i was wondering you know how much of it was shot under restrictions because you know the distancing for example m might have played an issue but it was difficult to see that that that, that played any part in it well, to be honest, you know, that's why we, we took so long to get back to shooting because really there isn't a way of shooting our show in that kind of compromised way of, you know, socially distancing and stuff. So that's why it was so important that we were able to have our own lab and have these really strict protocols that kept us safe. Um, you know, obviously we wanted to keep the scale and the scope that we always have um, because that's such an integral part to our series. Certain things had to be scaled back, of course you know, just in terms of our extras and things like that. You've clearly been very busy getting this season up and running, but you also managed to squeeze in a film. I know we're talking about Outlander, but I have to quickly ask you about Belfast. We had Kenneth Branagh on the, the show a couple of weeks ago, and I asked him about, you know, he must have had his pick of, of the cast, and he jokingly said, well, everybody was in COVID, they couldn't say no. Uh, but, but I take it once you heard about this project, you just wanted to, to get your hands on the script. Oh, yeah. I mean, you don't get the opportunity to work with these amazing people like Kenneth Branagh, Dame Judi Dench, Kieran Hines, Jamie Dornan, and tell a story from home and not want to jump at it with, with all you've got, you know? And the minute I read the script, it was just such a beautiful human take on what happened. And um, it was just, it was so beautiful on the page and, and it was such a wonderful experience filming it. Well, season six is almost upon us for Outlander. How far can this go? How, how further down the line? How many more stories can Diana give us? Well, you know, she's, uh, I think she's on book nine at the moment. So we go back pretty soon to film season seven, which will be a really long season. We're going to do 16 eps. Um, it'll probably take us about 13 months to film. So I think we're all sort of stealing ourselves for that, for the, for the, you know, just kind of mustering up our stamina to get through that. And then, you know, these decisions are sort of out of our hands, but you know, there's definitely room for that to, to happen if, um, if the, the higher ups are willing, I think. Well, if you can find your way to get Captain Freeman back on, even just for a little episode, that would be great. <laughs> I will. I'll put in a good word. Well, I don't know about you, but I think that's legally and contractually binding. Don't you think? Where do I sign? Where do I sign, Katrina? Uh, the fabulous uh, Katrina Balfe there telling me about the new season of Outlander, which begins on Sunday. More Outlander chat. To come. Let's get back to Outlander now, shall we? We've heard from Katrina Balfe, who plays Claire. So let's now hear from the other half of the central couple, actor Sam Hewan, who plays Jamie Fraser. He spoke to the afternoon show's Katrina Rose and began by explaining, explaining Jamie's situation at the start of this new season. It picks up a short while after, and uh, obviously Claire, it was uh, pretty horrific for her and the trauma that she went through. And I think the whole, the whole of Fraser's Ridge has kind of been rocked in some way. But not only that, the you know the war of independence is fast approaching, and uh, Jamie Fraser in particular, he's got a lot of responsibilities, and he's been given the responsibility of becoming the Indian agent. Um, so the go-between for the crown and the and the Native American tribes that are there, and I think uh, for him he's torn between his loyalties. So there's a lot to contend with, and really it's a it's a I hate to say it, but it's a, it's a probably even darker this season. I mean, I think I think it's there's been a precedent for that throughout the series, but but for those who are yet to discover Jamie, can you tell us a little bit about him and actually maybe quite the journey he's been on? Maybe he's not quite the character we knew at the beginning. If people haven't quite caught up yet. Where have they been, these people? I, I mean, honestly. Well, if you don't know, um, obviously based on on Diana Gabaldon's best-selling books, and Jamie Fraser is a man of his time, but he's quite afford thinking. He's from the 1700s, 
he meets Claire Fraser or Claire, should I say Claire Beecham. Um, she's a time traveler and they fall in love. And basically they've been on this journey together and they're now in America via a number of uh, great adventures and uh, France and, and Jamaica. And, and they're now settled in North Carolina at Fraser's Ridge. Um, he's a family man, obviously. He's been a general. He's been uh, a leader of men. Um, and now really, to be honest, probably just wants a quiet life. But um, that is not going to happen because the War of Independence is, is fast approaching and he needs to do the right thing, not only for himself and his family, but but also the settlers on, on Fraser's Ridge. He's very much at the heart of the, the War of Independence, which people might not quite expect for him to be so involved. Yeah, he's well, I mean, throughout Outlander history, they've always been trying to dodge or, or to change history you know from Culloden where they they tried to change the outcome of that to to um to now and and they know basically they know they're on the wrong side they've become I guess um they've been working with the crown they've been awarded land and they've created Fraser's Ridge you know a settlement for fellow Scots um but they know that of course history tells them that that the crown are going to lose that the British are going to lose this battle so he knows at some point he's going to have to have to switch sides but obviously it's about timing and about when when to do that. And um, he really is stuck between a rock and a hard place. I mean, you pretty much hinted at there. Jamie is no stranger to a bit of a scuffle or a or a brutal battle there. But what's that? What's that prep like for you? Can you talk us through that? Yeah, you know, Jamie has definitely been in a few scraps, and uh, I guess you know the biggest of them all would be Culloden, and uh, that's when he sent Claire back to her own time. He didn't think he was going to survive that. Fortunately, he did, and and fortunately, Claire came back to him a number of years later. But for me, yeah, it's fantastic. You know, we love doing all the the action stuff, and uh, there's a great deal of it. And I know, obviously, with the war fast approaching, I think there's going to be a, a lot more in my future. You, you and Katrina Balfour plays your wife, Claire. You guys have gone on a bit of a journey yourself, in that you are not only the main characters, but you're also producers of the series. So, so what does that entail? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I guess being on the show for such a long time, um, you know, you become the continuity. And I think we know the show pretty well. It is a big family from from the crew to the cast and I'm proud to be producers on it to to be, I guess, even this last year, you know, there were there isn't anyone on set because, you know, a lot of the writers or producers couldn't come across because of COVID. So we were the go between on set. And I think it's important to have us there. And I guess who else knows the character as well by this point, you know, we've lived in them for quite a while. So it's an honor to play this character. And I think uh, he's a fan favorite. So hopefully uh, we've done him justice. Do you ever, do you ever kind of get that want or that desire to kind of get in the director's chair or, or both of you? Is that something that you might want to move into? Yeah. I mean, directing Outlander would be a real challenge. I think, obviously, we know the show inside out, so it would be uh, fun. It'd be kind of strange to direct a co-star, but, you know, I've, I really enjoyed, I've created my own TV show, uh, Men in Kilts. It's also on Stars, and I've been doing a, a number of other projects as well. So I really enjoy that side of it. And uh, I guess it would be full circle to, to come back and direct on Outlander. I'm just not sure we have the time to do that, but who knows? I mean, this is a, a show for you that's been a real series of kind of opportunities. And and this one, we're back on Fraser's Ridge, like you said, in North Carolina for the latest season. And you've traveled the globe with this show. Like, what an opportunity that must be. What have been some of your your highlights? Oh, God, yeah. We we really have been on a real adventure. And, you know, from starting the show, which we didn't know how it was going to go. And we didn't really understand the sort of the length and breadth of people love the show that the, the fan base was there um i mean you know we've we've shot in scotland obviously but we've, we've been to south africa we've been to prague and we're now shooting back in scotland but it's for north america so it's incredible the scope of the show and i think this season is is no less you know it's a big show that's why there was such a break you know because of covid we we, we wanted to keep the size and the scale of the show but obviously we couldn't have that amount of people on set so we really had to wait for a time when we knew we could do it safely um so we're very lucky that we, we were able to to finally find a time and a place where we could do it and, and also you know implement some safe, safety protocols so everyone was was kept safe but you all have such a good rapport as well, which which obviously really helps. But um, we mentioned earlier about this idea that, you know, we, everyone was drawn to Outlander during the pandemic and wanting some really good things to watch. And obviously the love story is central. It's very intense. But episode two, we'll see Jamie's loyalty tested to Claire. Mm. 
no, I'm giving away spoilers now, but yes. I am, but that's yes. for my own personal gain. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, no, I mean, uh, well, you know, uh, I mean, their love affair, their romance is the heart of the show. And I think we all want to see Jamie and Claire succeed. And we know they, they always will, but that doesn't mean that they don't go through a lot of uh, trying times. And Claire, as I said before, she's really struggling with the... Um, the, the fallout of what happened to her and she's not dealing with it well. And I think Jamie's a w kind of aware of that. He's certainly keeping an eye on her, but he's giving her space to deal with it in her own way. And I think um, that's going to create a lot of tension, a lot of issues for them. But Jamie also has, you know, as I said, his sights are on other things as well. He's been given this, this job um, as an Indian agent and it puts him into some, I guess, questionable situations. And talking about space, you already, we already know you're coming back for another series, which is great news, knowing that we'll have something more to wait for after this one. Have you started filming on that yet? Oh, no. I just got back yesterday from New Zealand shooting Men in Kilts too. So, um, yeah, I uh, obviously enjoyed doing that. But we are about to start shooting our new season quite soon. Very excited about that. That's going to be a longer season. Uh, this season, just about to uh, air, is is obviously only eight episodes but they are kind of extended episodes so i think the fans will really enjoy that but yeah we are about to go back to start shooting again so that will be uh that'll be fun and a whole new adventure to go on yeah sam hewn there talking to the afternoon shows katrina rose